We learn how Satan attacks our minds with lies. With the aim of making us ignorant of the word of God. What happens when he tries that and it fails? What happens when you don't listen to the lies of the serpent? Well, then he is going to come at you as a lion. The Apostle Peter says. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, 1 Peter 5 8. If he can't get your mind, he is going to come after your body. How does Satan do that? Before I continue, I have a favor to ask of you. If you have not already subscribed, please support our work by doing so, and share the video with family and friends. Thank you. As a serpent, Satan deceives. As a lion, he devours. Job is the perfect example of this type of attack by the devourer. Job would not believe Satan's lie. God testified about him saying. For there is no one on earth like him, a man who is blameless and upright, who fears God and shuns evil, Job 1.8. So Satan got to work on his body. First, he caused Job to lose the fruit of his body, his children. Next, he caused him to lose the means to nourish his body, his grain and animals. Finally, he caused him to lose the health of his body, deadly sores all over him. Why would Satan target a man's body? Because your body is the temple of God. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? 1 Corinthians 6:19. Paul understood this perfectly well, and so he writes. As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage now as always Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death, Philippians 1:20. People cannot see Jesus, he is risen. So, Christians, are the closest people can see of the risen Christ. We are the light they see in this darkened world. That is why Jesus says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven, Matthew 5:16. It is our conduct in the body that glorifies and exalts Christ. Unbelievers are unlikely to read the Bible to get to know God. But they can read you. Someone has said, be careful how you live, because you may be the only Bible someone will ever read. Satan attacks your body because God uses it to proclaim the gospel. Peter says in 1 Peter 2 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You see, creation reveals the power and wisdom of God. But Christians reveal the grace and love of God. God uses the members of our body to proclaim the gospel of Christ. That is why Paul warns in Romans 6:12-13. Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lusts. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. The Holy Spirit empowers the members of our bodies as instruments and tools for the gospel. Satan knows he can hamper the work of the gospel. If he can get our bodies wrecked. In that way, we become ineffective in God's plan. No Christian should minimize the importance of the body. The Christian who is careless about his or her health is playing right into the hands of Satan. Another reason Satan attacks the body is because, the body is God's treasury. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us, 2 Corinthians 4 7. When God saved you, he put a treasure of eternal life in your body. You have the very life of God within you. God put this treasure in Paul. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which was committed to my trust, 1 Timothy 1 11. 
Paul in turn invested this treasure in Timothy. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you, guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us, 2 Timothy 1:14. Timothy in turn was to invest it in others. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses in trust to faithful men, who will be able to teach others also, 2 Timothy 2:2. 2, 2. Failure to invest this treasure in others hinders the spread of the gospel. A weakened body cannot invest in others. Another reason Satan attacks the body is because, it is God's testing ground. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9:27, But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others I myself should be disqualified. Every Christian looks forward to receiving a crown. Satan can rob you of your crown by causing you to break the rules. If he cannot cause you to lose your salvation, he will cause you to lose your crown and be ashamed. And now, little children, abide in him, so that when he appears we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming, 1 John 2:28. What weapons does Satan use to attack our bodies? Impatience? Saul was impatient when Samuel delayed. And he took it upon himself to offer the burnt sacrifices, 1 Samuel 13. Impatience does not make you wait for God's direction. It causes you to depend on your own wisdom and strength. Impatience can be very costly. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God. Philippians 4 6. Satan also attacks us with suffering. Paul suffered when a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Satan will attack the fruit of your body, by causing sickness among family members. He will attack your source of nutrition, your finances. He will attack your health. When your health, finances, and family troubles begin to crush in on you, know that Satan is lurking at the corner. What defenses do we have against Satan's attacks on our bodies? We have the grace of God. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly in my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest on me, 2 Corinthians 12 9. It is okay to pray when you are going through suffering. Paul prayed three times for God to take away his suffering. Jesus prayed three times in the Garden of Gethsemane. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you, 1 Peter 5:10. God is a God of grace. It is grace from start to finish. Grace is God's bountiful supply for our every need. And this grace is available to you. How are we to respond when Satan comes as a devourer? First, submit yourself to God. If you rebel you play into the hands of Satan. Oh, that you would keep silent, and it would be your wisdom. Job 13 5. Dot second, thank God. Giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Ephesians 5:18. Give thanks, not because you enjoy the suffering, but because you know God will use it for your good. Third, spend time in God's Word. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope, Romans 15:4. Finally, look for ways to glorify God. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name, 1 Peter 4:16. Paul and Silas glorified God even though they were in prison. Stephen glorified God even though he was being stoned. God may not change your circumstances, but he will use the suffering to change you, 
so that your circumstances will work for you. God bless you.